The FX6, 3, and 30 are my favorite cameras to use right now. And when it comes to price to performance and matching all these cameras together, I don't think it really gets any better value than these cameras right here, especially the FX30. However, with all of Sony's recent announcements coming out, uh, like the Burano and the A93, there's a lot of cool features that could trickle down into these cameras. And here is a quick list of what I would like updated or normalized between this cinema line, or just add it all together. The first and the most recent elephant in the room, global shutter from the A93. But honestly, this isn't really something that I need in the FX6 or the FX3 even. I would love to see this in a more affordable like FX30 because one of my biggest complaints about the FX30 is the rolling shutter performance when you're pairing it with the other you know, FX3 and FX6. It's just a completely different image as soon as things start moving around the frame. And it's kind of distracting to put all these cameras together, um, especially if you're filming like cars or something whipping past you. That may not work putting a global shutter in, but just improving the latency of that shutter readout uh, would eliminate some of the jello when you're trying to pair these with other Sony cinema cameras. What I would really love for these cameras to have is increased dynamic range and open gate capability. Filming an open gate would unlock a lot of different creative things with this sensor. Uh, I was looking into getting to, into two times anamorphics like the new Pavos that came out, but when you put the, a two times anamorphic on a 16 by nine sensor, it just doesn't really look that great when you're comparing it to something that can do open gate and you can really utilize the entire sensor and stretching it to an anamorphic lens actually makes a little bit more sense. Uh, with, a, with a two times anamorphic on a 69 uh, sensor, it looks like a, you're looking through like a sliver in on a screen. So if you could film open gate, I would be more inclined to spend more money on lenses. Um, that doesn't really translate to Sony lenses. I would love to have some Pavos or an Atlas lens, but um, being able to shoot open gate would also help with like social media content. Um, being able to have more room in the frame to reframe things. Currently, I'm, uh, you know, if I show up somewhere and I'm shooting like a little project and they want some social media content, I'm just turning my camera sideways. And if I have a rig with a monitor on it, it just looks a little ridiculous and it like, there's gotta be a better way. The next one I have though is uh, a little bit out there, internal raw. It would be great if some things from the Burano and you know the Venice trickled down into these other cameras a little bit more. Um, but honestly, I can't see internal raw coming to these cameras. It would be great, but probably not. One thing I would actually love is to have SDI out on the FX3 and FX30. Right now, I'm using an HDMI cable coming from the back of my FX6 to any recorders just to keep things you know, on the same playing field. Um, if this had SDI, I would just use all SDI cables. However, I'm kind of like using the lowest common denominator right now, and the HDMI cable is working, but there are certain times where I'm like, I wish this HDMI cable locked into place so I wouldn't have to think about bumping this into something and removing the cable mid-shoot. With SDI, you don't really have to worry about that. And it's just a cleaner, more secure connection. And having a SDI port, uh, maybe even instead of the HDMI port would be awesome. Um, even if Sony sold like a super expensive SDI to HDMI adapter for the people who needed that, um, I'm sure they would buy that. But most people with a cinema camera is probably using SDI. The next bullet point after that has to do with the 3 and 30, and that is shutter angle. I don't know why these cameras don't have shutter angle yet. I love ch changing frame rates on my FX6 because it's just smart enough to know what shutter speed I want based on my frame rate. If I'm changing frame rates with the 3 or the 30, I have to be very diligent about putting in the correct frame rate so it doesn't look ghosty or choppy. Um, even if they buried it in the menus, because I guess these two cameras could technically be more beginner friendly than a larger camera, bury it in the menus and make me turn it on. The default could be shutter speed, but I would love if I could enable shutter angle to just make my life a little bit easier. My next bullet point is internal timecode via Bluetooth. Sony cameras are able to use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to connect to a phone or any other device. So, why can't we have 
internal Bluetooth syncing Wi-Fi that would just sync all of our cameras time code together. I know they have time code together already. I've been using the technical sync boxes and I honestly, I absolutely love that workflow. And I love how you ingest all of your footage to your computer. It just syncs it automatically. I have a video going over it. I'll leave in the description down below, but it leaves me thinking every time I'm setting them up and like charging them and making sure everything is good to go. Why can't this just be enabled in the Sony software talking together and just make this work? Even if you have to have like a separate base station somewhere that your app could talk to and then the base station talks to your cameras or something like that, I totally understand. But I always think every time I'm setting them up, especially with three cameras in a wireless lab, I'm like, this is so many cables and there has to be a better way. <laughs> the next one is the flip screen on the A7R5 and A93, but with the flip in mirror settings from the FX6 screen. There are some times where I'm using my A7R5 that I'm using to film right now, and I'll be putting it in like an overhead mount and I'll have the flip out screen a certain direction and the camera is too smart and it thinks that I want the, the flip out screen to be like in vlog mode, but I want it to be upside down. I always think that like there's a switch because I'm so used to using my FX6, I'm like, oh, I'll just mirror it or flip it or whatever. That's a fantastic feature on the FX6's monitor. I would love to see that come to the FX3 and FX30, not only the flip and swivel screen, but also the mirror and flip of the FX6 functionality. My next bullet point is more customizable buttons. I love how many customizable buttons are on the FX6, but when it comes to these two cameras, I feel like there's not quite as many. And uh, when they're labeled certain things and you hand your camera to someone else and they push a button that thinks they're going to be able to adjust the white balance, but then it toggles between manual and autofocus, they're like, what is this thing here? So having more customizable buttons on here would make it easier to just hand your camera to someone and say like, okay, all the default buttons are the defaults, but my custom buttons, you don't really have to worry about. Just use it as intended. My next bullet point is a hot shoe mounted viewfinder that would work similar to how the um, handle for the FX3 and FX30 works. You can screw it in. It is secure with these two screws and this just seems like a great design for a cageless design of these two cameras. And I would love to see a viewfinder be able to be put on here. Uh, one of my favorite features, and it pained me to sell my A7S III, was that viewfinder on the back. When it's really sunny out, I can just put the, the viewfinder up to my eye and I can see it crystal clear. I feel like I'm kind of guessing a little bit and I have to rely on zebra stripes and the histogram a little bit more when I'm filming in sunny conditions without a monitor with these two cameras. The next bullet point ironically has to do with this handle and it is to make it longer here. I never knew this, but whenever I pick up my cameras, um, I think Sony wants you to pick it up like with one finger in front of this divider support bar here. I always pick it up behind that support bar and I wasn't able to get a like confident grip once I have more things rigged up on my camera. So uh, also reinforcing this with a little bit of metal here just makes it feel a little bit more rigid because the plastic that this uh, top handle is, I feel like if I really rigged this out, I'm very nervous uh, to put a uh, monitor in a cage with a big NPF battery and then a uh, SSD in the back. It actually puts a lot of weight on this and I feel like if I really moved this around a lot, I could break the handle right here. So I'm always very careful whenever I have that uh, set up just because it's a little heavy for a plastic top handle. I know that higher end cameras have very nice top handle options that are made out of metal. I'd love to see an option for that with the XLR port for these two cameras. My next bullet point may be the topic for a new video, and that is I want to be able to customize the noise reduction on the FX3 and FX30, just like I can with the FX6. I ran into a project where I was trying, I was filming at the high base ISO for all these cameras, and I was trying to match them, and the noise reduction was just a little bit off, and I had to go into DaVinci and kind of massage each camera to get the noise to look all standardized, because um, the base ISO is the same on these two cameras, but it's different on the FX30. And then I had a different, uh, I think my noise reduction was set to low or maybe even off on the FX6. 
and the FX3 was a little grainy because I can't adjust that at all. So it would be much easier and it would streamline my workflow if I could manually adjust all of the noise in these cameras together. Again, I kind of went down a rabbit hole of noise reduction with these cameras and I may make a video of that in the future, how to get these all to look like they have similar noise. The next thing I wrote down is mainly for the FX6 because I don't think these other two cameras would get this. And that is to have the IBIS and ND from the Burano make its way to the FX9 II and the FX6 II or whatever they're calling them. I think filming with the FX6, I really have to rig this camera out and purposely make it heavier so I don't get a lot of little jitters because these smaller cameras have more jitters, but they have active stabilization that can combat that. If I strip down the FX6 and just have the lens body in a handle, I get a lot of, I'm gonna say like unwanted shakes whenever I'm filming and I have to film and move around. But if I use the FX3, I'm able to just use it as stripped down as it is right now and get some pretty great results with active stabilization enabled. Again, if I need to film handheld, I'm purposely building this camera up or using my easy rig to make this camera the most stable it possibly can be. And the ND on this camera is an absolute dream to work with. So I would love to see the ND and IBIS make its way to the FX6, probably more likely in the FX9. The next thing for the FX6 is XLRs can be on the handle, but give me a 3.5 millimeter jack on the body of the camera. There are so many times where I just need to get a quick shot with a lav mic and I don't have the Sony, it's like UWP or EWP um, lav mics that actually sit on the cold shoe. You don't need any adapters or anything for that. But that being said, if I don't have the top handle on, I can't use that anyways. So having a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, would be a great benefit to the next version of this camera. The next few things I wrote down specifically for the FX6 and the first one, internal timecode via Bluetooth, false color, a better large monitor option, even if it's an extra purchase. The first party monitors would be nice to have. I like the design thinking that Sony has. It's you know pretty modular. There's a lot of different mounting points for the monitor. However, the quality of it leaves me wanting a little more. Even if I would have to you know, buy it as an extra purchase, that would be totally fine. The next thing I wrote down here is some kind of a better cable management option. I feel like once I have this is okay, it just looks a little bit sloppy. When I have another monitor like my Ninja 5 on here, I have to have a power cable going to the Ninja 5 from my battery. And then I have to have an HDMI cable going from the camera to, it's just adding more cable and more uh, possibilities to snag something when you're filming. And I have to like add cable ties. Um, I have some Mondo ties, those are a good solution, but they're really keeping cables in place. They're not routing and tucking cables away. So while that's a good like Band-Aid solution, it's not the solution I'm quite looking for. Next one, optional Sony handle. Um, the original handle is actually pretty sturdy. However, I always think once I'm rigging this thing out, um, I recently got an easy rig and I the first thing I did was put it onto this handle and I picked it up and I had you know rails in the bottom in my map box and I was like, I don't know if I trust this top handle to support all the weight for like a six, eight hour day of having this thing on here for a long period of time. Um, you know, maybe I can do that for a while stripped down, but like I said, I like to have a lot of things on my camera. So if I do have to film handheld, it doesn't look like, you know, I'm filming in an earthquake. I like rigging up my camera a certain way, putting the easy rig on here to um, hold it up by this handle is, it works, but I would be much more confident if I had a more sturdy metal option. The next thing I wrote down was for the FX6 again, and it is an easier way to mount an external recorder. I feel like there's a lot of great places to mount the regular monitor that it comes with. However, once you get an external recorder on here, it almost feels a little bit unbalanced because if I put it right in directly in the center on one of these hooks, it's hard to use the uh, handle and that's the most balanced it can possibly be. I can't really use the cold shoe or hot shoe mount here because 
Then I'm blocking where I like to put my monitor and my microphone when I put it on. And whenever I put my monitor to the side, it always wants to pull my camera over here a little bit. And whenever I'm using my recorder, I always put rails in the bottom of my camera just to make the bottom a little bit beefier and longer. So if it's going to tip, it's going to take more force for it to tip. Uh, knock on wood, I've never had my camera tip over with my recorder on when I had the rails, but I have had my recorder like tip my camera over when I don't have anything on the bottom. Like if I'm just using this Manfrotto plate, it's very difficult to have an external recorder that's not really central to the camera. Um, I know that's a really like kind of picky one, but I do like to mount my monitors like either dead set in the front, like the reds. I love the way the reds mount their monitors to their cameras. It looks so clean. There's like very few cables. The routing is great. And, and most of the time they have metal handles on them. So it's really strong. There's no worries about breaking something and possibly dropping your camera. So I would love a more robust external recorder mounting option on the next version of the FX6. Okay, that was a long one, but that was literally the complete list of every feature I would want on the next Sony camera. If you could have one feature in the next camera, what would that be? Let me know in the comments. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.